morning everyone hope you're fine um so about 10 days ago i had mentioned um that javed got this um finally got a slot in uh, and md anderson you know and he was there on thursday and friday of this past week and it was very a very intensive um two days right so the first day he went in and he met two of the doctors um, who are experts in this field. Um, and, and, and this type of cancer that Javid has, it falls under the term CUP, CUP, um, and that stands for Cancer of the Unknown Primary, okay? And so that primary refers to where the cancer originated. So Cancer of the Unknown Primary, that means they have no idea where this cancer started, right? And I had been saying that all along that everybody was a bit confused. Where is this? Where is it coming from, et cetera? So there's this category, two to 5% of people who suffer from cancer fall in this category, cancer of the unknown primary. So these were the two doctors that Javed saw on Thursday, the ones that deal with this. So I guess prior to that, they would have received some labs, um, pathology reports, these kinds of things. And so that would have informed, you know, their meeting with him. And, you know, that day he did another CT scan. You know, they did a lot of tests and things like that that you would imagine at a place like MD Anderson. Um, but what what came out of that, what came out of this uh, time and this meeting with these two doctors is that this is this cancer that Javid has is even rarer than the rare. They have never seen anything like this. They have no idea what it is, where it's coming from, um, right? So if you think of that, within that two to five percent of people with this CUP, he is even rarer than that. So you know, these are the top doctors in the field. They have all the data. They have all the experience, and they are like, wow you know, what is this? It looks like this, it's acting like this, you know, it has a, a behavior pattern like this, you know, whatever the case might be, they really can't make sense of it, they haven't seen it before. So, of course, that's a bit disheartening, you know, because wouldn't it have been great if he had gone in and they were like, oh, yes, we've seen this, this is the protocol you need to follow, bang, 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 let's get to it. I mean, you know, this is what uh, would have been great. Um, but it, it seems like it's going to be a little bit trickier than that. Um, so that's one aspect, you know, of, of what came out of his time at MD Anderson. And we are very grateful. I mean, you know, this is at least some direction. This is at least some kind of clarity, you know, as to what is happening. And any little step closer gets us uh, closer to a good result. Um, okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to let you all know. And so when you pray and when you think about Javed and what he's going through, you know, these kinds of specific, specific things can help inform, you know, your thinking and your prayers. Um, yeah, very rare. Even the top doctors who deal with this stuff are a bit stumped. Um, the second kind of aspect, you know, that was a bit hard for us as well, and was that, um, you know, as, if y'all have been following along, y'all will know that he did four rounds of chemo. And at that point, the tumor shrunk. Um, and the idea was, okay, let's, this tumor is still too large for surgery. So the idea was, let's do three, let's do four more rounds. Let's see if we can get it to shrink a little bit more. Now, while you know, again, yeah, so that was kind of like a sens sensible, uh, you know, um, thinking at that point. But what the CT scan revealed on Friday in, in Houston was that the last three rounds of chemo did nothing. And actually, the tumor has grown. So, yeah, so basically, the chemo treatments, you know, three to seven that he has, have been futile in terms of um attacking this this tumor not only has it 
uh, not shrunk, it actually grew a bit, right? So we're dealing with a very aggressive, a very stubborn, a very naughty tumor. That's Javits too. I would like to say something else, but you know, let, let me hold back um, on this tumor. So the chemo is not working uh, against the tumor. However, what the, what the chemo did do was it considerably weakened Javits body. So this chemo was so aggressive and kind of uh, what I understand it was like, you know, thrice the amount of medication. Um, it, it has really weakened his body. Um, and so his physical health right now is quite poor. Um, you know, I think I spoke about, you know, not wanting to eat. And so his weight is low. And then there are just some other issues that this, this, these last rounds of chemo have caused. So, you know, we're kind of like, feeling like we're on the edge of a precipice a bit um very rare cancer the last three rounds of chemo failed and and this and this tumor is just persisting um and you know his body is now considerably weaker right um so what the doctors at md anderson are saying is that surgery at this point is what needs to be done Okay, because this tumor is just so fast growing and it's just being so aggressive that and the chemo is not working right to counter it. So they need to get this tumor out. However, because his body is so weak from the chemo, he cannot withstand surgery at this point. Again, this is major surgery. You know, um, this tumor is about the size of a pear, right? Or, you know, yeah, a pear, fine and it's also pear-shaped. Um, so this is a large tumor. And so for them to go in and, and, and have this kind of surgery, you know, they want to build Javid's health up a little bit. Um, it's really taken a toll. So, you know, he has some monitoring on him. I think it's a Fitbit. I don't know what kind of data they're checking on him. They want to monitor and see how healthy he is. They have assigned him... I want to say nutritionist, but it may be more than that. I'm not sure what the term might be, but they've assigned him someone who is going to work with him diligently to kind of bring his health markers up. I would imagine weight and I don't know, whatever, whatever can constitutes healthy enough for surgery. Um, they're going to work with him on that. He's still on some medication to help some of these other issues uh, that have come about because of his now further weakened system um so this is where we're at right now no timeline for the surgery yet because i guess they really want him to be ready physically for it also keeping in mind that it can't be too long because of how quickly the tumor is growing um so this is where we're at you know i am grateful still that he got in there and he's now with the experts and more than anybody else, they're going to know the way forward. And part of me wants to believe that because they have not seen anything like this, this is going to be high priority for them. And they want to figure this thing out. This is what I really want to believe and that they're going to put the time and effort into doing so. Their expertise, you know, I, I'm hoping that these doctors lie awake at night and they're wondering and they're thinking and they're analyzing and they're texting their colleagues and they're like, let's crack this case, right? This is where I am with this. Um, Javid is very positive. He actually looks upbeat. I mean, I think that chemo was really doing a number on him and the fact that it's now no longer gonna happen. I think, yeah, he feels so much better. He looks better. He's speaking with positivity um, and he's ready to fight. He's ready to fight. He understands what's at stake. You know, he understands that, um, Big surgery, big things are going to be happening, big changes. Um, but he is ready for it. You know, he's staying as kind of positive as he can because he says there's no point in being negative. What's the point? It's not going to do any good, right? Wise guy. Um, so this is the update and I will continue to keep you all posted. Lots to pray for all around. Um, thank you so much for your love for Javed. You know, a lot of people have been asking him about what's going on. 
and that's kind of why i do these videos as well just so that he can just say okay look at the video you know it's all it's a bit tiring for him all the time to answer and keep in touch he loves everybody he's so grateful for the the, the love and the thoughts coming his way um thank you so much